escape shift in Explorer Pioneer would be pretty cool. We're like pretty close to that. Uh, unfortunately, on an Explorer, we don't have Arborg, which is the, you know, please put Arborg on the client ASAP. Um, but we're playing Dread Presence, which likes swamps. And whenever Swamp ends the battlefield under your control, you either get to draw a card and lose life, pretty nice special control decks, all that stuff, uh, or deal two damage to any target and you gain two life, which, hey, lets you either clear boards or, you know, kill your opponent. Pretty good, pretty good. And why is escape shift? We're not playing literal escape shifts. I think that'd be more of an option if we did have our ball though. Uh, that's something we could look towards. And even then you could do some like weird, crazy bring to light stuff. Um, but we do have some other things. And we have escape shift on a stick-ish, kind of, a little bit. Uh, uh, Aftermath Analyst, one in a green from uh, Murders of Carlock Manor. It's a one, three, when it enters the battlefield, you mill three cards, trying to put lands in our graveyard, and then three in a green, sacrifice it, return all lands from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Pretty good, pretty good. We also, other than this milling itself, have a bunch of lands that once enter the battlefield uh, and go for the bigger odds of the battlefield. So, River Tears Overlook, this is like an important part of their deck. Uh, enter the battlefield, you sacrifice it and get to search for a basic swamp uh, mountain lol, uh, or forest card and put it onto the battlefield taps and you gain a life. So, immediately it's getting you like an extra land in your graveyard and goes and finds like a forest or a swamp. Um, generally, obviously, because we want the swamps with dread presence, you find the forest first unless you need a black source. Yada yada yada. The other card that goes really well with Overlook, and we're kind of skipping around a little bit, is Elvish Reclaimer. Uh, let's use two of the different lands. If you've got plus two plus two, if there are more than three lands, your, three or more lands in your graveyard, and yeah, has that two your land ability to two tap sacrifice lands, such like for a land card, put onto the battlefield taps, then shuffle. And so there's some nice things to hit with that. One, like again, you can hit Overlook. That'll go like find you another land. So that's a nice one where you can like a block uses ability, and all of a sudden you're getting two extra lands in your graveyard instead of just one. So you can kind of surprise ambush things. Uh, there is. A underground mortuary as a veil land. There is a restless cottage as a man land. We have an Argoth because we are playing Titania Voice of Gaia. Those are the main things you'll be finding. There's also a catalog point up here. And there would be an Arborg, but of course there is not. <laughs> um, so I guess now we're at the bottom, we'll start from there and work our way back up. So three Orboreal Grazer, extra land drops. We want to get a critical mass lands into play. Uh, three Fatal Push, we want to not die early. Uh, so then we've got the four Aftermath Amalysts so that are kind of like Scape Shift S. Yeah. Sudden Reclamation, I guess, is, is, is what it actually is. Um, but, hey, we're, yeah. Uh, and then one bit of Triumph, which is, again, like, another, like, hey, we need to not die to, like, combo stuff and, hey, have some game plan. Dread Presence cares about swamps, so let's have all our lands be swamps. And that is what Dry, dry Out of the Elysian Grove is doing. And it gives you bonus land drops. Everything good all the time. Uh, Ram and have Excavator to let you play lands from your graveyard, because that's where you're putting them all the time. And then, again, let's your cast stuff. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Nissa Resurgent Animist is a pretty cool one. Doing a green for 3 3. Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield, you can add one mana of any color. Nice, that like Lotus Cobra style ability. You can notice there's not any Lotus Cobras in this build at the minute. Um, I've been flipping and flopping around with some of the numbers. You could play them if you wanted to. Uh, the second time, though, thing though, is that if it's the second time this ability is resolved this turn, so either from a Rivers' Overlook, a Fable Passage, something that gives you an extra land drop, uh, you can reveal the cards on top of your library until you reveal an Elf or Elemental. Um, which, hey, we've got two Nissas, so they do kind of find each other, but Titania is an elemental, which gives you a way to kind of, like, search for that. Titania, in combination with Argoth, if you have a certain amount of lands in your graveyard, uh, i.e. if there are four more lands in your graveyard, and you own this and have a Argoth in play, you get to flip it and transform into Titania, Gaia, Incarnate, and that is one of the other plans that the deck kind of does outside of the Dread Presence stuff. There's a, there's a lot of different synergies here. Um, Vigilance, Reach, Trample, Haste, Power is equal to the number of lands you control, but when it ends the battlefield, return all line cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Again, that kind of sudden reclamation ability. This one obviously is, um, excuse me, what am I doing? Oh yeah, because it's not an actual card. Uh, <laughs> is doing it like while generating a bunch of power with reach and trample and haste, which is pretty good. Uh, four mana then, four personal counters on a target land you control, it becomes an elemental with haste. Is like a huge, awesome win condition. Again, bring back all the lands that can trigger your present stuff. Uh, it will like trigger back through your outlooks, any of the battlefield effects you have here. Um, and yeah, really, really strong. So, pretty awesome package of cards here. Uh, kind of the other thing holding things together a little bit is Squabbing Emergence. Uh, Fathomless Descent, obviously, lands are permanents, permanents of the graveyard, returns to the battlefield, target non land permanent of your graveyard, with mana value less than or equal to the number of permanents. Uh, it brings back Titania, can bring back either Dryad or Dread Presence. Um, we're also playing Blossoming Tortoise, which is the last card to talk about. Tuna Green, Green, or 3 3. 
Enter the battlefield or attacks. You mill three, return land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Reuse a bunch of lands, but also activate abilities of lands you control plus one less. Things like Argoth for one green, green uh, Castle Locked Wayne for black, black, that kind of thing. Uh, activate your mana lands are cheaper. All that's pretty nice while milling you for the lands of your graveyard and also bringing them back to recover them, ramping as well. It's all pretty great. We then have the four copies of Dread Presence, which is the, 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 the main thing behind the deck. And, uh, as of, like the last slot here, I decided to play a Get Roll Monster. Uh, I've not had a chance to actually test this out yet, so we'll see how it goes. But three black green for six six with Death Touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice the Get Roll Monster unless you sacrifice a land. But you get to play an additional land on each of your turns. So it works really, really well with like random ex random app, random app excavator where you get to play additional land drops. Uh, sorry, when it plays land drops in your graveyard. But then whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you draw a card. It's just a bunch of card advantage. Is a big beat stick. Hey, I thought, oh yeah, this is on Arena. I forgot about that. There was, a, there was a point in time where this was on Arena and not actually playable in the Explorer format for no reason. Uh, but should be super sweet here. The actual lands, I talked about the Riveters Overlooks already. There are four of those. There is one Fable Passage here, uh, one Underground Mortuary, a Surveil Land, the Restless Cossage, which is the Man Land. When it attacks, it makes food and access a card from the graveyard, which are pretty kind of nice abilities. The life gain can be important. Uh, four Overgrown Tombs, which is a Swamp, importantly, as is the, the Mortuary. Uh, for Blooming Marsh, this is the best like early land you can play. Uh, two Forests with five Swamps. Again, fetch the Forests early if you can help it and you need to. One Besage, one Takanima. Takanima here getting back and recurring a bunch of stuff while putting more lands in your graveyard as well. All very, very nice. Uh, two copies of Argoth to go with the two copies of Titania. And again, you can two of these with Realm's Reclaimer. And then five Swamps and a Castle for some card advantage. Going to be taking this into some best of one ranked. We'll see how it goes. Okay, Blooming Marsh. This is by all means pretty solid. The one thing this deck doesn't do that well, and we've kind of adjusted for a little bit, is it doesn't really interact with our opponent much. Uh, things like we have a few paper pushes, there's one copy of bit of Triumph, but we don't have great ways to interact here. So we'll, we're mostly trying to do our own thing. And that has some pitfalls, like there are some combo decks that are faster than us. The combo is not particularly fast or consistent without our book, um, but we're doing like pretty decent mid rangey stuff around it. A bunch of recursion, bunch of synergy. Again, and like Titania, pretty powerful. We can turbo Titania out, um, which we might look to do here, to be honest. Yeah, things go. Plumper, this definitely like seems just to be like Monogreen Devotion. Not seen a Nykthos, but could easily expect to see one. Uh, don't have tons to hear here, so I'm just going to pass and go. Cool. We'll do some Elvish Reclaimer things. There's the next boss. Green, green. Yeah. Um, I actually, weirdly, have a Mono Green deck that I've been messing around with a little bit, but it's doing Eldrazi stuff. Again, a couple of like things which like we don't quite have on Arena properly. We'll just kill this. Oh, that's a kind of sweet idea. Uh... It doesn't progress stuff for us that well, but it does save us a bunch of life. I just got a card. All right, I'm gonna be pretty daring here. I'm gonna discard a dead presence with the idea of being able to bring it back with a Scorpion Emergence later on to cheat and play, get like on that mono mana cost. Currently, have one permanent card in the graveyard. We can track that and see if I'm throwing or not. But hey, let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Third land lets us Dryad, which lets us rest this cottage. Means we're like a little bit faster. Don't really want it. Well, I guess we could attack her, but um, we'll see. Five storm the festival. I have some unfortunate memories around this. Uh, as I guess so does everyone. All right, we've got a new oddity. We've got a topiary stomper. Fortunately, these aren't anywhere close to being online to be able to attack. This thing can come crashing over though. Would like to draw on land to enable us to. Yeah, we can't really able to do. Like we're not dead straight away. There are at least two. This needs seven lands, does that? Yeah, seven lands. Three lands away. They have a lot of mana. Uh, <laughs> this is mocking me because this would be so good if we had. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we need to play this. There we go. Alright, we just need to hope we don't die. They'll be able to flash back the Storm the Festival. We're going to be in a pretty rough situation. 
Unfortunately, that hand's not quite lined up perfectly. Uh, if I'd just taken the four early, maybe be in a much better spot with more lands in our graveyard and like the reclaimer able to like threaten to block. As is, there. These things happen. That's a lot of mana. All right, what are we cavalrying for? Hmm. Yeah, could just be dead. One drop ripples and grows. Oh, they can transform the oddities. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let's hope we'll drop one haste. Let's set this up. Alright, game two. Game two. Second match with the lands deck. I mean, I can keep these. Reclaim and Alex. Like, hey. Finding the time to use Reclaim and, like, can be, like, a little tricky. But, beating up towards Gate Rock Monster type stuff sounds pretty cool. Opponent. Okay, cool. I can also not show the Reclaimer. Seems loose. We kind of wanted them to use a kill spell on the Reclaimer rather than the Analyst anyway. The Analyst would get more advantage or value out of later. We can even hold the Analyst a little bit. That's probably the smarter thing to do. Rather than hold the Reclaimer. Though, hey, this is just going to get a Firing Impulse. We're probably going to play our teacher up. Uh, especially given we have the Squabbing Emergence, we can bring whatever we mill through ish back. Uh, ideally that thing is not a uh, Elsha Claimer, but hey. Aftermath Analyst into milling through another one into bringing it back what's coming out of Emergence seems pretty sweet to me. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go to combat attack here. Like, Impulse looks like Phoenix. It'd still be like, uh, is it creativity or something like that? I'm gonna try a dryad here. Might as well go for it. And uh, we've got a cottage as an extra land to play if we do get to resolve it, which is pretty nice. Okay, may disappear definitely says not Phoenix. So you would expect it to be, is it creativity? There are a couple of other like, is it more like mid rangey decks as well? It could be going on. I'm gonna open attack again. Okay, so Analyst, let's just get back like what was currently a couple of lands. Using the Dryad is more potent, right? Yeah. I like, left the one up here for Dryad Disruption, negate. Actual negate. Yeah, fair. The deck I was trying to think of that I'm missing with. Oh, I don't remember, like, it's probably that. Here we go, attack. We just bring out. So this, this is also not, like, necessarily sorcery speed either. The value you can just instant speed is nuts. We can, like, end step do this, untap, try and make a get rogue monster. Yeah, and deduce is like a really nice new tool of creativity as well. Just be able to make a token to target while like drawing, and then like obviously like the it's also think twice, but like cheaper to flashback if you look at it that way. It slices, it dices. Excuse me. Table, yep. I'm trying to think if there's a way we can get to a uh, little spot versus creativity. There's only bringing back two lands, which is like not what I mean, like on that actually. Two lands. Try and pay for a potential counter spell. I expect this one to resolve, to be fair. 
But then I also expect them to untap and us to get Xenagos World by Wamped. So there's that too. Uh, I'll play this. See how it works out. Ooh. Okay. Question. How many cards are you discarding? None. We, we are so dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen this as well, so I'm, um, I guess. Yeah. We are uh, not living. I'm gonna minus three. Update title to Airball Plus. Okay, let's give it another shot then. This is a slow hand, like, we don't have. Uh, you'll play like 26, 27 lands. I'll keep this. We're likely to draw into one. Apps are the to pull my opponent log into six. Yeah. Please do not mull to six and then uh, show and tell me. That would be lovely. I'd appreciate that personally. Harvester, go ahead and push this. That's an interesting hand. Okay, yeah, we have to make Nissa now, and then we've got Fable Passage next turn, which double triggers the Nissa. All of a sudden, we are cooking with gas. We have the Dread Presence, which we'll be able to cast. Don't do it. Please do not do it. What if you play this deck in modern and you just like assisted the the, the Fiend Ripper? Wouldn't that be cool? Alright, we lost our creature, which is unfortunate. I don't really want to expose the Dread Presence, but I don't feel as bad about it given the circumstances, I think. Um, we've got the Aftermath Analyst. We're going to be able to do some things to like trigger bring it back. I think that's okay. We've got a forest here. Again, we want to leave the, for the, the swamps in the deck because they then trigger Dread Presence. Is an awkward one. This is like a not like a a trivial card to deal with either. Like they need a bit of triumph or something like that. Like they can't just fatal push it with no no resistance. But uh, we'll see. There's the vapor in the graveyard. Now if they persist it back, that'd be pretty popping. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna slam gear rock monster. This is what we're here for, surely. <laughs> uh, this is the first time I think I've seen the Gitarog Monster in play on MTG Arena. Um, so there's that. I just think it probably gets played a ton in like Historic Brawl. Come on, man. Please, one time. Uh... We can definitely build something. We've got one land in the graveyard at the moment. We've got Aftermath. Oh yeah, let's see what we hit. Definitely hit fail, but... I feel like if uh, we don't sacrifice it straight away, it's going to get... dunked on. I think the best thing we can actually do is to get back the Dread Presence here. It feels almost like a throw not getting back there and get it wrong, but this way we get to kind of do a thing a little bit. We'll draw cards for now. This is a swamp, that's nice. We want to find a dry out of the at least in growth. And we get to like pop a bunch of things. Same log into six. Um again, R on the vampire build. They just got a one vein ripper, it doesn't mean they don't have another one. They are gonna kill the analyst, which does make sense to me. Uh of course. I... Okay. Uh, you don't have a swamp right now. We maybe we can find one. I'm gonna play this first. See what we hit. That's not a swamp. This will be a swamp later.
I think for the time being, we still want to be drawing cards. Okay. So we know that we definitely have two swamps between the Fable Passage and this, this turn. There's three in play, which means there's two more in the deck. Yeah, they know we can kill that board. All right, we get one, we get one. Okay, let's play one more, let's play one more. All right, this will be the last game we play with the lands deck. Potentially pretty powerful start. We draw three. Uh, obviously not having like a basic swamp here, uh, the forest here is, is unfortunate. I think we'll just go ahead and play the overlock to find one. As the Fable Passage can later on enter the battlefield uh, untapped. And hey, we get to start putting lands in our graveyard already. Nice. Uh, with regards to playing Analyst versus playing Grazer, it Dep depends a little bit on what we draw. If we draw a land and know we've got a fourth land for the table passage, then we can make the t we can threaten a turn three, uh, turn three, four twice. It's so like here. Uh, I'm gonna do this, and then we've got the table passage for the following turn. Allow us to accelerate a tortoise. Yeah, ac the accelerated tortoise sounds like a chess opening. I like that. Uh, we'll block the soul scar mage. They have a monstrous rage or like a shock. <laughs> All right. Let's go mage number three. At the moment, there's not any. Really... Okay, we'll grab the other forest here. Again, exact same reasoning. Tortoise also putting cards in the graveyard for emergence is really, really nice. We will go ahead and do this. One, two, three. Three. Um, what about the passage? Okay. So we're at twenty. Uh, there's also like some random, like just like bits of random life gain here. Uh, interesting. I'm gonna try not to block with the tortoise, but we'll see how that goes. We've got a lot of mana open. All right. So if they use two removal spells on the tortoise. I think that's fine. It's done a lot of work. We can even get it back. Maybe we bring the tortoise back. So we are kind of slowly assembling stuff. Uh... Hmm. Again, get it wrong seems pretty good. That, that, I feel like, has to be the play. We can even do this in a way where we get to draw off of it. Pop off. And we drew a swamp. Kind of whoops. Okay. Into your graveyard from anywhere, draw a card. Okay, that is nuts. Sure. Um, we have an extra land drop here. In this case, I will use it. We have the Dryad to make everything swamp, so we just want the mana here. Um, in terms of lands in our graveyard, we have a bunch right now, but we're kind of building towards this escape shift situation. Uh, that is if we don't die. So let's block a source damage. Um, I've got an extra analyst, so I'll block a specifier here as well. Please. Do what they do. So they can shrink the Gate Rogue Monster. At this point, like, the Gate Rogue Monster's already done a bit of work. Um, they're still kind of building our stuff up. Okay. Uh, let's the swamp. We do have to draw a card. Okay, Titania are pretty big. Uh, these are all pretty good things. Uh, this fixes our mana, but we don't have land drops for it. This draws a card which may then get us a... Right, that's a Dread Presence into our graveyard. Uh, this is worth more in play, I think. 
Like the Reclaimer is a 3 4. They're about to block. But for a turn. Uh, I mean, yeah, we're going to get a bunch of. I'm going to draw presence in play because we're going to flip Titania if it stays alive. Is the other thing. That's going to be huge. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Be like a 13 13. She should not die to getting burned out. But we should have enough life total between the Titania and everything else. I assume we get to keep the Titania alive. So let's try and do that. Not getting blocked. Alright. Come to the graveyard. Game life draw card. Alright. Uh. I didn't quite get to do everything here. I want to bring back your presence thing. So I guess thing number one. Oh yeah, we don't have a... We don't have the castle. Now we get this online. Uh, we still don't get to do this thing, but I will tap this now. It's clunky. It gets like a lot less clunky with Arborg when you can actually like just have this one land that just does the Dread Presence thing for you. You then have a bunch of ways to tutor for that and find it. Uh, also thought about versions of like Beseech the Multiverse and some other, some other shenanigans that you can use um, to like then go do that for Scape Shift or like bring to light Scape Shift uh, with similar still a little out there, like a bit, uh, not like top echelon of, of Pioneer decks, but it's definitely something. They have given us some really cool tools in that analysis thing, which I really like. Fair. Well, we kind of got there. Alright, Black Green Lands. Uh, was a little bit all over the place. Um, the deck is really, really sweet. Like, there's some, like, it's a bit clunky. Like, it's obviously top heavy. We've included the Gate Rider Monster at the top here. It was actually, I think, really good. Um, there are a couple of other things you can do as well. We tried to be, like, a little, like, have a bit more interaction here. But it's tough because the deck's, like, pretty trying to do what it's wanting to do. Scarming so, mean, Modus was amazing. More copies of that would be pretty good. Didn't see the Ram Mark Excavator. But that way to tutor for it, it's a bit awkward. Had a couple of copies where like Nissa, a couple of moments where Nissa would have been really good for opponents that kill spell, but like in those situations, like we can actually like get there um, without it. Well, uh, Boss Me Tortoise, I think two copies is like a solid number, more than that, and it's it's not the greatest, but it does like a lot of work in the deck. Um, and what I would try and do is like stream down that a little bit to have like an extra Boreal Grazer, I think. It's so frustrating to like draw one when you don't have a land in your hand, but it's so good if you get to on if you get to play it on turns one and two, um, and like accelerate you out. Or specifically, if you get to play it on turn one to get to one of your like awesome three drops, then that's really really strong and where you want to be. Um, Wizards, please please can we have our Borg? Deck is super super sweet. Um, there's some potential here. Like list needs a little bit of work, but I think this is where I'm at at the moment. And yeah, if you've got any great ideas, let me know in the comments as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do please like, subscribe, share the video around. I really, really appreciate it. And peace out. Have a great day.